Hi, welcome to this comparison of the Moog Mini Moog versus the Behringer Poly D. It's something I've been looking forward to doing for a while, this, because I did do the, the Model D versus the Mini Moog. But the Model D, you know, it's quite a small panel, it's a bit fiddly to get your hands around. It sounded really good, has to be said. But the overall feel of playing a nice quality instrument wasn't there. You know, you've got a tiny box set against the Mini Moog. Sort of no comparison from a user experience, really. Yet you can get the sounds. Yes, you can use it in a track. Yes, it's really handy, it's portable. But I really like getting sort of hands on and having a good old play. And the Poly D really does set itself up as, as a quality instrument. It's a lot smaller than the Mini Moog, but doesn't feel cramped. It's got a lot more going on in the control panel. Obviously, it's got the sequencer, it's got the chorus and the distortion, and it's a bit smaller. It's about eight or nine centimeters smaller than the, than the Mini Moog. And it's missing a few keys down here. I think it's uh, from the B down to the F on here. It's got 37 keys, same as the Sub 37, obviously, hence the name. And these feel like quality keys. They feel nicer than my I got the, the original Sub 37 and the keys on that are a bit iffy and these are, these are much nicer to play. The knobs are really solid, the pots are metal, let's put that back on. The switches all feel really good quality. The wood is even the same colour as the Mini Moog wood. It's not finished quite as nicely, it hasn't got all the nice wood at the front and the wood at the back but I don't think it really needs to. It is in itself a really sort of nice quality instrument. Whatever your thoughts on the aesthetics of it really, it's got uh, the Juno chorus uh, distortion and it's got the sequencer that they use on, on all the Behringer synths. So it is a bit of a Franken synth. And from that perspective, it does look a bit odd, but it's a, you know, you can't complain, I don't think about any of the sort of quality of, of any of the parts on this. It's about 10 kilos, it's a really, heavy instrument. This is about 20 other thing, but this is this is not this is insane the mini mode. So let's jump in. And the first thing I'd say is if you get one of these, when you get it out of the box, take a look at the synth tool app because it has an accent on it and it took me ages. I thought there was something wrong with this. It took me ages to work out why it was sounding slightly different every now and then and it's because there's an accent on it. So go into the synth tool app, take the accent off uh, and then it'll act more like the mini mode. But yeah, it was a real, real head scratcher that was for a while. You may well have seen some Poly D reviews already and you know that it's got four oscillators, not three. It's got this uni mode and a poly mode, so you can play it polyphonically or paraphonically, however you want to think of it. And as I just said, it's got the sequencer, it's got this sort of chorus based on the Juno and extra distortion circuit, as well as a high pass mode. But other than that, if you ignore those functions, it should pretty much be a clone of the Mini Moog. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sort of ignore the additional functions. I'm gonna ignore this oscillator here, so I'm just gonna use the FM on oscillator four. I'm gonna ignore these uni poly modes and the auto damp. I'm just gonna see how does this sound, or can this take the place of a Mini Moog? Does it sound the same as the Mini Moog? Does it feel the same to play as the Mini Moog? And if you've got a Mini Moog, you probably don't like taking it out of the studio. So the Poly D could well be the tool that you can take gigging, you can take to different places, because it acts like the Mini Moog itself. So let's jump in by taking a listen to the oscillators. And um, just before we start, a little word on levels. The Poly D, when you've got just a single oscillator on, the level is extremely low compared to the Mini Moog. It's about 18 dB less than the Mini Moog. Setting all the input levels the same. Here's the Mini Moog. Here's the Poly D. Unbelievably low. And I think I may have an issue with this. And if you saw my other video with the Poly D, and you know, I had a little bit of issue with clicking and the clicking sounded really loud and that could potentially be because there's an amp not working in this. So I'm getting the sort of the initial click sounds so much louder than the actual sounds coming from this. So levels are a bit different on this. So forgive me if they sort of go up and down a little bit. It's difficult to try and get everything exact while I'm doing the video. But there is a genuinely good reason. So once again. So I'll just try and get them level now. I'm using the Focusrite Scarlet Generation 3 interface here. And you can see that inputs 3 and 4 are on about, I don't know, about 60%. And input 2, which is the Mini Moog, is on around 25% maybe 30%. But for 
getting all that sounds pretty identical. Really difficult to tell those apart. But listening a little bit more closely. So if I got it, e u e u. But I suspect that's no more difference than you'd get with, with two mini modes. There are very, very, very minor differences in the tuning here but it's nothing that I'd really concern myself over. The Mini Moog maybe sounds a tiny bit brighter. But I think the Mini Moog sounds a little bit more stable, actually. If you listen to the sort of the top end of the note, just the zzz at the top. A little zzz going all the way through it. And on this, it's sort of a zzz with a rasp on it. It's a lot smoother, that, actually. I've got this coming out stereo because I was thinking about playing with the chorus, but if I, I'll record that in mono now and just see if it's a difference with something to do with it going through stereo and slightly, slightly out of phase going through the interface. Okay, so here we are going in mono. Yeah, there's a real minor quiver in that, but again, these are just tiny differences. You know, the, when I'm playing a part, they sound the same. And that's, I think that's what's important. And I have been having a little play around with these. When you get into FM Territory, they are so close that, uh, I mean, these are, as I say, minor, minor, minor points that I'm sort of loath to bring up really. But, you know, in the comments, people always say, well, I can hear this, I can hear that. So, uh, you know, just point it out. But from my perspective, if I'm taking this anywhere, playing it on stage, I'm recording with it, that's fine. The oscilloscope shapes also look slightly different. And the end of that frequency analysis at the top end, the poly is a bit more curved and this is a bit straight. But I'm being a little bit more picky than when I did the Model D comparison because I was just so shocked with that. Um, so Behringer have brought, already brought something out that I was really shocked, thought was really good. Uh, so, you know, it's like second time round, you end up finding other little bits. So let's move on to a couple of the other waveforms. So taking a look at the triangle. Again, when you're playing, there's not much in it. But when you stop and listen, there's a little bit more buzz in the poly D. Let's go to the shark's tooth. A little bit brighter on the poly D, perhaps. Nothing in it again. Over to the square. It's a lot louder on both of them. A little bit buzzier this time on the Mini Moog. Again, very, very slight differences, these. You're just playing a bass line.
Once you start playing them, any difference is absolutely minimal. Go over to the 50%, is it 25% pulse? Wave shapes are slightly different. The closest one so far, I think, has been the, um, been the shark's tooth. A bit buzzier on the mini Moog, and go to the 10%. That rasp's a lot sort of more prominent on that, isn't it? Again, once you start playing, I'd be happy with that. It's not as smooth as the Mini Moog, but you know, it is a fifth of the price. Transpose button coming in handy there. I don't normally talk about the mixer section as a separate entity, really, because you know, you just blend in signals, aren't you? But it does something different on the Poly D than it does on the Mini Moog. And I mentioned earlier that on the Poly D, we've got sort of really low signal levels compared to the Mini Moog when I'm using just a single oscillator. But when I add the second oscillator, I get quite a big jump in the input level, but not a jump in the volume. Yeah, it's a bit bit louder, but on the on the levels, it's coming in an extra sort of 10 dB. So single oscillator. You can see the analog three in there on the focus right. Right of the second oscillator. It's jumped a bit. And it's jumped even higher. I pull those down again. Back to where it was. And then I add these. Jumps to distortion. Let's try that on the Minimog again. It goes up a couple of dB on the Minimog, but on the Poly D. jumps an awful lot, which makes me suspect I've got a little issue with this one. And I don't like reviewing and demoing units that have got issues, but. So the volume hasn't increased again. It's just, the, uh, maybe some DC offset. but the volume's much more controllable on the Mini Moog. And I'm bringing that up really because I'm surprised because I've not had any issues with any of the Behringer stuff, except for the double trigger on the Wasp. Um, but I've had issues with every company, but not, not, not Behringer so far. But I'd be really interested to know in comments if yours does a similar sort of thing. So let's have a look at the external input as well. On the Poly D, I've put the headphone out onto the external in. On the Mini Moog, it's got that rooted internally. So we'll just have a listen. Let's bring some in feedback in. Lovely that, isn't it? And what it tends to do is it kills any emphasis you have. So let's turn, try that. So without, you've got a lot of emphasis. With.
Ah, oh, gorgeous sounding that, isn't it? Let's try that over here. So we've got the phone's level to juggle with the external input volume. So let's hear it without. Okay, let's add some. Get an overload pretty quick there, so I'll turn the phones down. So just before it goes mental. It's a lot more aggressive sounding than the Mini Moog, isn't it? Just do that over here again. Yeah, it's a lot softer on the Mini Moog, much more aggressive on this. Very, very useful though still. Let's try turning the emphasis up. Bring the um, feedback loop in. So it's acting in a similar way to the Minimo, but it's not identical. But you do have the distortion circuit on the, on the Poly-D as well. Let's have a tiny play with that. So some really nice, useful stuff in there as well, isn't there? Neither sound like the uh, feedback loop on the Mini Moog, but the, there's plenty to play around with. Try both. <laughs> oh, lots of fun to be had with that. Moving on to the filter, this is the big one. Not too much you can tell from just that simple sweep. So, sounding really similar so far. Let's try and bring in a bit of emphasis. And it's a complete volume killer, isn't it? So let's try that over here. Same, it's got that same jump around sort of between two and four. So I wouldn't know I was playing with one or the other actually, uh, except for that's got a slightly bigger knob. So let's tune it. See what that sounds over here. Whoa. Very close indeed, aren't they? Maybe a bit more emphasis on that one. Let's pull this down a bit. Or, sorry, put the mini mogul. It's 
to whack this one up full, it seems to be sort of getting a lot more sort of resonant, doesn't it? So turn your headphones down or your speakers down because this might hurt. Interesting that it's sort of feeding back to the cutoff somehow. Let's try that over here. Now you're getting a lot more resonance from the from the poly day. And if I just show you that on the on the frequency analysis, mini mode on full. So if you want this to sort of never go out of mini Moog zones. So okay, the volume's changing and actually the cutoff's changing as I bring in the emphasis even higher, so. Keeping the poly D on about 7.6 is about equivalent to maximum on the mini Moog. Put keyboard control on, shall we? See if we can play the filter. No problem. Playing with them, they, they're not acting quite the same, are they? So trying to get that em emphasis on there. Trying to get it higher and then changes the cut off a bit. So not quite as easy to do it on the Poly D. Almost there, but it's not as crystal clear as it was with the Model D. I was playing with the Model D and everything sounded almost identical. So I'm getting, a, I think it's a more crisp tone from the Mini Moog, but to turn the emphasis up. Oh, there you go. So I've got to say I'm a little bit surprised. I did think the Poly D was going to be closer to the Mini Moog, hence the, uh, hence the video. It's not completely dissimilar. It is acting like a Moog filter. Just that emphasis as you turn it up and it drops the cut off and having to play between the two of them is a bit weird. So add in a bit of emphasis and a bit of contour. <laughs> It's difficult to get the envelopes exactly the same. Not sure if the sort of decay shape's the same on both of them exactly, but... But you can get extremely similar tones, can't you? I have found that if I just play with the cutoff on this, on the poly D, I get quite a loud click, and I think that might have something to do with these. Um, this the issue I'm having with the, with the levels actually. Do the same over here. Take the keyboard control off. And I can take that off, obviously, using the, uh, the amplitude envelope. Just give a little nudge. But it does then make me think, are the envelopes potentially digital? I don't know. Just test that out quickly. So what I've done here is set up a maximum contour, a lot of emphasis, and I'm just going to change the decay to see if we get a nice smooth transition 
from um, a, a click into sort of a laser zap. And I did something similar with the Crave when I was playing with that. That's on zero. I'm gonna turn it really slowly. It feels like it's, like it's digital, actually. Not that it makes any difference to me whatsoever. I had the uh, the SE one, that had digital envelopes. It didn't really bother me, but. That's coming in straight away, isn't it, that? You get a click or a zap. And then you're getting zap number two. Zap number one. Click. So click, bigger click, zap one, and zap two. Try the same on the on the mini moog. Feels like a smoother transition. It's difficult to, to sort of hear what I'm doing. You sort of feel as you're playing around with the knob. You feel like you've got a lot more, a lot more tiny differences in there. But I, I, it could just be me being a bit mad. Now, definitely goes from a click to a big zap. I don't want to labour the point because it's difficult to say, to say, and that's why it doesn't really bother me if it's digital or not. But um, the issue with the clicks and stuff like that, and then just as I was playing with the envelopes, I just thought, is it, there doesn't seem to be a smooth transition. It's either there or it's not. So I don't know. You can still get nice snappy sounds. Let's take a look at FM then, use an oscillator four as the Modulation source on the Poly-D and obviously Oscillator 3 on the mini -mogue. So let's have a listen. I've just got a Sawtooth on Oscillator 1 and a Square on Oscillator 4. Squares tend to give much more sort of um, vibrant FM tones. Bring it in. So Poly D on full is the Minimoog on about, I don't know, about 80%, 90%. Sounding identical so far. So let's have a little tweak round with, um, with the tuning of Oscillator 3. Indistinguishable so far. Let's do something a bit, a bit madder if we can. Identical. See what happens if I switch off keyboard control. Identical. <laughs> okay, walk it down a bit. It's like a spot the difference game this now. Let's try. Just flicking them across. Mm. 
minor differences there, and obviously the tuning might be slightly out. It was. So all really good stuff, that. Frequency modulation on the filter. Oh, it's gorgeous, that one, isn't it? So when we're getting into the FM, there's the indistinguishable, as far as I'm concerned. I've also got a separate LFO here, so Let's take it to the LFO. LFO. So that's on square. Really similar. Put it onto a uh, triangle. Considering I'm just flicking through from LFO to LFO to from a square to a triangle, um, changing the LFO rates, playing with the frequency. You know, these are. Spot on. So in conclusion, could the Poly D, I mean the original question was, can the Poly D replace the Mini Moog? Does it sound exactly the same? No. Does it sound close enough? Absolutely. The little odd thing with the emphasis is you turn it all the way up and the cut of frequency drops a little bit. That's a bit strange. And the resonance is a bit more harsh than it is on the Mini Moog. The clicking annoys me, but I do think I might have an issue with this one because those levels are so low. And I'm gonna bring in more than one oscillator to get a real a jump in levels, but no change in volume. So possibly an issue with this one. So I don't really wanna linger on that too much. Envelope wise, really snappy. Not sure if they're analog or digital. Doesn't really matter to me. It's a snappy envelope and the clicks you can get rid of by just knock, knocking the attack by about half a millimeter. But it feels like a quality instrument. Is it gonna replace my Mini Moog? And uh, no, because nothing ever will. And that's got nothing to do with logic. I just love this thing, you know, I, I can't really explain it. If it didn't have the Mini Moog, uh, and I wanted something that could do that, would I go for the Poly D? Absolutely. The addition of the sequence is great. I won't go into the sequencer. Um, watch my Crave video if you want to see how the sequencer works. Or maybe, maybe I'll do another video on that. The addition of the distortion and chorus are really good as well. And obviously you've got Poly Mode. Maybe let's turn the other oscillators on. But you know what this is. If you're watching this video, you've seen this before. 
<laughs> oh, <laughs> not quite as nice as that though. Absolutely splendid. Poly mode with a bit of FM. That's the that's the future. That's lovely, that is. So the Poly D definitely gets a thumbs up. It's a, it's a good synth. It's $600, so it's twice what the Model D was, but you do get the keyboard. You've got extra bits on it. It's bigger. It's a more complete instrument. And I think if they'd have brought this out before they brought the Model D out, everyone would be going absolutely crazy for it. A 600 pound or 600, I don't know how many, how much it is in dollars, but this cost me 600 pound. It's got four oscillators, it's got a poly mode, a uni mode, chorus, distortion, sequencer, and it sounds like a mini mode. Uh, you know, a, a no brainer from that perspective. Well, I hope that was of some use to somebody somewhere. See you next time.
Wow, 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 wow,